Hello and welcome to You So You. My name's Zoe and this is my channel all about the crafty bits and pieces I get up to. I knit, I sew, I spin on a drop spindle, I dabble in weaving from time to time and anything else that takes my crafty fancy. But today we're doing some sewing and I've got some sleeves to put in. So grab a brew, put your feet up and let's get started. Welcome, welcome back to any returning viewers and any new viewers, a very warm welcome to you. Now as I mentioned at the opening to this video, I'm working on some sewing today. I'm putting some sleeves into my Sewaholic Alma blouse. Now uh, this blouse has a few different views, I'm doing view A, I will put a picture up around about here so you can see what it is I'm aiming towards. And it's got these little cap sleeves that gathers in and then some binding that you put on and the instructions are really clear. So I thought I'd take you with me whilst I have a go at putting these sleeves in. Um, it's quite an interesting construction, it's not one that I've done before, in that these sleeves themselves don't go all the way around the arm side. So we'll see how we get on with that. Um, so yeah, without any further to do, I'll switch the camera around and let's get started. Okay, so I've got you on a bit of a sideways angle so that you can see the uh, pattern piece that I'm about to attach to the Alma blouse. This is the cap sleeve piece. Um, so this is the, the cap itself, so that's going to attach to the blouse, and this is the hem. So it's going to run from the back of the shoulder over the top to the front of the shoulder. It's not going to go under the armpit. So this is going to sit across the, I want to say bicep. Not 100% certain that's the right term, but I think as a bicep. Your upper arm. Um, and there's going to be gathering between these notches here. So there's two notches there, that denotes the back of the sleeve. And there's one notch here, so that denotes the front of the sleeve. Um, generally speaking, in patterns, particularly English and American patterns, one notch is the front of the sleeve and two notches is at the back. There's another notch here, which is the shoulder seam. So that's going to be useful for lining up the sleeve piece to attach it to the, the rest of the garment. But these pieces are the bits that I need first to run some gathering stitches. Once I've gathered and hemmed it's going to get attached to the blouse and then there's some binding to do which is this uh, strip here to uh, neaten up the the finish and to actually put something under the armhole so let's get cracking and see if I can work out a better angle for you to see what I'm actually doing as I'm sewing okay so I'm going to run a long stitch length uh, a little way in from the edge of the fabric and we've done two or three lines, probably two. Um, three is probably going to be give, it's probably going to give me better gathers but we'll see how the space goes. Um, so I'm going to run those lines of gathering stitches between the two sets of notches. Um, just excuse the uh, stuff over here. My uh, writing, my desk is also my sewing table so I've got my uh, computer and stuff pushed to the back at the moment. Okay, so let's uh, run these gathering stitches. Um, I've got long thread ends coming out the back of the machine so that I've got space to pull. I'm going to go quite slowly because it's a curve. So you can see I'm running the edge of my foot along the edge of the fabric to give me an even distance all the way around. the needle and again I'm going to leave a nice long thread length at this end. So I'm going to pull it quite far out. It's just going to make it easier when I come to pull up the gathers as I attach it to the body. So now I need to run a, another length of gathering stitches. Make sure my thread ends are out of the way. And I actually want to run them not too far from where the first side is. I'm going to put my foot back where it was and I'm going to move my needle across a little bit. I actually had it on number two for the first row so I can move either side. And I'm going to move it that way for my second line. I'm just going to shift that over slightly actually thinking about it. 
go back to where I was. I was on two. This is that. Yeah, so that's where my needle was originally. So move the needle over to the side. And now it's going to go down to just to the left of my first line of gathering stitches. Now I'm going to run the same motion, but I'm going to do it slowly, extra slowly and extra carefully because what I don't want to do is move the stitches that I'm doing now over the top of the line I've already got in. So I need to gather on their own line. Okay, it's not a perfectly straight parallel line that I've produced there. I always find it quite tricky to get the, the subsequent lines even, particularly on curves. Um, but I do now have two lines of gathering stitches. Ideally you want your gathering stitches to be inside the seam allowance. I'm pushing a bit close here um, to have that happen. But I work on the principle that if this interior line is visible once the sleeve is attached, I can take it out. That's what unpickers are for. So I'm actually going to do a third line of gathering stitches now. Um, just to make sure that I've got a nice even gather as I pull them up. And this time... I'm going to go to the right of the existing stitches. I've removed my needle all the way across the other way. I'm just going to move my fabric over slightly as well, just to make sure that needle is clearing the existing line of stitches. Again, I'm going to go quite slowly because obviously I don't want to miss the fabric and I don't want to cross over the existing lines. Okay, so that is one sleeve's gathering stitches in. Ideally you want them, as I say, parallel to each other. Mine aren't perfectly parallel, but they'll do the job. So what I'd like to do is I like to take the top threads and the bottom threads separately. And not all the top threads together at each end, not all the bottom threads together at each end. I find that then makes it easier when I'm trying to find the threads to um, to pull up the gathers. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to put the gathering stitches in on the other sleeve and then we'll be ready to, to hem. Okay so it's a nice straightforward fold and press, fold and press uh, seam fit with the well, hemline and um, so it's nice and straightforward. Um, so yeah, they're now ready. We're now ready to put these on the blouse itself. So let's... Uh... Okay, so I've pinned the sleeve in, matching up the notches as the pattern told me to do so. You see we've got these big loose bits here and here. That's the gathering section. So I'm going to use my knotted groups of threads to gather up those stitches. Let's just get them tangled around each other on that end. There we go. So I have one set of knotted threads coming from the bottom, one set coming from the top, and I'm going to pull gently on them um, to gather the seams. I'm on a little bit of a weird angle doing this, I'll do that off camera um, and show you once I've gathered them and pinned them in. So that's my first sleeve gathered down and pinned in place. I'm just going to pop another pin in here actually. Um, I like to use extra pins with gathering because it helps me when I'm sewing it in to keep them how I've placed the gathers as much as possible. You want to take your time when you're gathering down your sleeve to get it to a level of gathering that you're happy with. I mean you'll see that mine is not perfectly perfectly even. I'm okay with that. I tend to focus my gathering more towards the centre than the edges and um, so I do end up with flat pieces and I quite often end up with a, a flat piece if there's a pin in the middle to keep the placement but I'd rather my sleeve was in evenly and the gathers were just even enough to look right from a distance than spend hours and hours and hours getting them perfectly perfectly gathered and then I would start over because I've messed up the placement of the sleeve. Um, I'm also not overly fussed about how perfectly even they are. I'm not on the sewing bee. 
um, but get them as, as even as you want them to be. So the next step is to sew the sleeve in and then you do the same on the other sleeve. There we go with our little cap sleeve in place. A tiny bit of catching but not so much that I'm going to be worried about it, just one little snippet there. Um, but I'm going to leave that as is. So for this sleeve I just need to bind these edges and then it's the same for the other sleeve. Okay so the binding strips are these uh, lengths of bias cut fabric. Um, and the process is really quite simple. The first thing we're going to do is sew them into a loop, so right sides together, seam and then press open. And then we'll fold them in half, give them a press and attach them to the sleeves. Okay, so here's my prepared bit of binding. So it's folded in half, uh, wrong sides to wrong side, so the seam is enclosed. And we now need to attach it to the armhole in the sleeve on that we've, that we've inserted already. And we're going to be matching up the raw edges um, and matching the notches. So there's notches on the, the binding as well. So we'll get that attached and then we'll stitch it on. Okay, so now that the binding is stitched on, we want to turn it to the inside so that it works like a facing and stitch it down on the inside. So I'm going to actually trim down the seams a bit in order to do that. I'll come back and show you the finished result. Okay, so that gives a nice neat finish to the seam edge where the sleeve is joining the body. And once I turn it the right way out, that's the effect that we're getting. So we've got a line of visible stitching, but that's okay. Okay, so I've got a bit of hand finishing to do on this to get it finished. So I'll be getting on with that. Okay, so that's the sleeves in. I've got a little bit of hand finishing to do and the, the waist tie to still make. So I'll go and do that and get some photos taken for the Minerva post that's going to accompany this make. So my profile for Minerva is linked down below if you want to keep an eye out for that going live. It should be there already. Technology willing. Um, so, so yeah, so go and check that out and I'll link in that post to the pattern and the fabric as it's a, a Minerva fabric that I've used. Now, I would love to spend some time with you next weekend, so by all means, do all the stuff down there, and I will see you then. But in the meantime, happy crafting, and bye-bye for now.